YouTube, how the duck you doing? Duck Films here. What I got for you today is a video talking about the best settings in Arena Breakout Infinite. Now these are my preferred settings and what I highly recommend you all. Now I do want to ask if you're new here or find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, why not? It's completely free and it greatly helps me out as we're pushing for the goal of 5,000 subscribers, maybe even 10,000. Now I just want to quickly say I have a Ryzen 7 CPU with a 3070 GPU. Now as well as playing it, I also stream at the same time over on my Twitch. So my FPS can be, well, not the best at some times. So kicking things off with the game settings, we're going to come to Universal Field of View. We're going to crank this all the way to 110 so we get the maximum visibility. Now do keep in mind what it also says over here is that when you exceed the 90 FOV, it may cause display issues or even a reduced frame rate. So try to keep that in mind when you're cranking the field of view. Now when it comes to the default zero distance, I don't really tweak with this as I'm not really familiar with this setting, but if you do know, please let me know down below in the comments. Then of course the interface language is going to be English, head shake, low. If you play with high or medium, you're kind of a psychopath, but I highly encourage you to do low. Moving on to the HUD, everything that has always show, I have it set to always show. As it's just a better gameplay experience, it lets you know the information as quickly as possible. For example, when you have auto display on, health info is only displayed when you take damage or your armor is damaged. But for me personally, I like to keep it as always show, as I always like to know what HP my armor is at and what I should be looking out for. Then when it comes to quick treatment, I have it on auto display. Stamina bar is always show. Weapon bar is always show. Position bar is always show. Item quick bars is always show. ADS tips, uh, you can have it as always show or always hide. This tells you what to do and how to aim, how to adjust your zero, and how to hold your breath, how to switch to your sight, things like that. Rate time remaining, I have it to always show. It's always nice to know what the time is at. Performance info, I have it as always show, so I can keep a track of my FPS ping and packet loss. Especially when I'm streaming, it's nice to have. For whatever reason, you can delete your account. Uh, I'm not really sure why that's a setting, but... Now coming over to the image setting, I play by 16 by 9 at 1920 by 1080 on full screen so I get maximum FPS. The overall quality is going to be custom because we're going to be messing with some of these settings. When it comes to the resolution sampling type, I use close. As I hear when you use close, you get better FPS. Don't quote me on this, but let me know down below in the comments if that's right or not. Then for the max FPS, we're cranking it. So of course we can get maximum FPS. VSync is off. Start graphics card crash debugging off. Enable main screen frame rate limit off. This one is optional. I don't really need this. VSync, don't use VSync. Now, before you roast me in the comments saying, oh, you have all your settings on low, you should look at the game as the game is beautiful. Well, yes or no. Let's just say when it comes to any FPS game I play, I prefer performance over quality. So view distance is low, anti-aliasing is low, shadow quality is low, resolution low, post-processing low, texture low, effect low, vegetation quality low, shader quality low, and light quality not configured. It doesn't really matter what the light quality is, but if you do have higher light, it's going to be more demanding. Moving on to sound, I play with uh, IEMs, so master is going to be at 71, UI is at 4. Sound effects 64, BGM is going to be 4. So what spatial audio does is it makes it easier to distinguish the direction of incoming sounds. But for some reason, the sounds in this game can be a little buggy. Mic volume, I don't use the end game mic, so I don't need to mess with any of the settings. When it comes to post-processing, this actually kind of matters. So brightness, it's going to make it brighter in darker areas, pretty self-explanatory. But what I like to see is the sharpness. I increase the sharpness because sharpness makes it easier to see or easier on the eyes. The more sharpness, the easier it is to see, at least for me in my eyesight, but of course it can vary depending on person to person. So the one thing I will recommend, if you're having troubles seeing enemies or just seeing stuff in general in this game, try increasing the sharpness. Then when it comes to the controls, I have a G Pro Super Light V2 with 400 DPI. These are my two senses. Now, when it comes to aim sensitivity, I highly encourage you to not tweak any of these. 
but just focus on the aim sensitivity. You can go in and tweak all of the sites however you want to, but if you want to keep everything consistent, only change the aim sensitivity, none of these. Free camera sensitivity is on one. Double click interval is set to 0.30 or the default setting. When you increase the double click interval, all it is gonna do is increase the amount of time it takes for your double click to process. Now invert X axis, invert Y axis, quick throw, close backpack when hit, they're all off though. Close backpack when hit can be very useful when it's on. Then just like any other FPS, WASD, crouch is C, prone is Z, creep is caps lock, lean left is Q, lean right is E, sprint is left shift, jump is spacebar, FM direct, free cam, spindle mouse, sometimes I will use alt, fire left click, aim right click, I have it on press, hold breath is left alt, change mag, R, alt C, check mag, switch firing mode B, Alt B for check firing mode. Inspect weapon is U. A great feature to have when taking thumbnails. Throw a grenade G. And everything else is pretty standard. But now that we are in game, I actually want to show you the post processing settings. But actually, when we come to sharpness, I have mine set to 4 currently. As you can see, it's all right when trying to identify enemies and objects. Let me just show you when you actually crank this to, let's say seven. This is the after. Players stand out and objects stand out a little bit more. I have mine set to four as it's easier on my eyes. And as you can see, there's a lot of details that don't stick out too much when you increase it. Then contrast, I have mine set to 1.37. This is what it looks like at 1.37. When you go here and you increase the contrast, as you can see, it's a lot brighter. Go back to 1.37. Now saturation, as you can see, the colors are a little bit dull. When you go to post-processing and you increase the saturation, the colors are going to pop a lot more. It's like you have those OG gunners that every kid wanted when you're playing Xbox. So again, I have mine kept to 1.110. One but anyways, hopefully these settings helped you out. And of course, if you're new here or find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, why not? It's completely free and it greatly helps me out. But anyways, I hope you have a great day and catch you in the next one.